Hi everybody, Angel here. Hope you're doing great. And uh, I'm back on today to give some more raw vegan winter tips. Uh, and I hope that this helps on your journey. Whether you want to go partially raw vegan, you're just curious, you're kind of dipping your toe in there. Um, you know, you've heard about the raw vegan lifestyle and you want to find out more. Maybe you've started and you're having a little bit of, uh, of a challenge uh, staying raw. Um, you know, I'm giving some additional tips. And if you've missed my previous videos, you can check those out on my page. And I invite you to follow me over on YouTube. Um, really great comments over on YouTube. I really enjoy those. Um, and also you can go over there and subscribe. That way you can also, um, you know, tap the notification button and uh, get a notification when uh, new videos go up, as well as uh, joining my community over on uh, YouTube. So thanks for joining either live or on the replay. And uh, today I am picking up uh, the uh, tips that I share in my ebook entitled How to Thrive as a Raw Vegan in Winter and Year Round. Um, as I said, I've shared some tips in the, in, in the previous days here. Um, so you can check those out in other videos. And um, before I start uh, with the topics for today, I also want to mention that this Saturday I have a meditation session that I'll be leading. So I will be sharing uh, the benefits of meditation and leading you through a group meditation for all levels of experience. Even if you've never meditated before, it's all good. You can come on in and uh, join as well. Um, also, um, the following Saturday, I have a workshop on travel well. So how to travel well. And I've been lucky to visit six out of the seven continents. So I have tons and tons of great experience um, that I can share with you um, for you also to travel well. And I'm putting together some retreats this year, starting with Costa Rica. So I invite you to tap the link in my bio and sign up for the a notification email list um, that will be going out very, very soon uh, to... Uh, you know, give you more information on the Costa Rica retreat as well as other retreats coming up this year. So um, with that, I am going to start with um, the topics uh, for today. I'll be covering a few of the topics out of my ebook, How to Thrive as a Raw Vegan in Winter and Year Round. And you can tap the link in my bio and then, uh, you know, uh, look at the books that I have over on Amazon that you can easily download on your phone, your laptop or your um, tablet, for example. So the first topic for today is mix and match. If you do not want to adhere to a completely raw vegan diet in winter or any other time of year, you can choose to mix and match your raw and cooked vegan ingredients to add a bit of cozy and familiar warmth to your winter meals. So what I mean by that is here are some examples. You can make a cozy combination of cooked and raw ingredients. So for example, you could add the following cooked ingredients uh, to a salad with a base of raw leafy greens. So like on a bed of greens, for example, you could add cooked beans or lentils, cooked quinoa or buckwheat. Um, you can simmer um, some vegetable broth or you could also steam some vegetables and um, that way it will give you some warmth um, because I know it can get really cold. Um, this is my fifth winter in the northern part um, of the world and um, as a raw vegan and I know it can be super challenging where I am in the north these days. It's below freezing. So I can definitely understand that, uh, you know, a warm element to your um, raw vegan journey can be very, very uh, soothing and comforting. So, um, you know, um, also if you want to add some cooked ingredients listed above, like to a raw vegan soup and, or maybe some raw vegan bread. So you could keep part of your meal 
raw and then the other part you might want to um, warm it or cook it um, you know in different ways I prefer wet cooking so that means steaming and boiling for example and I'll be giving some other tips on how to warm your food and still keep it raw um, in subsequent uh, conversations and it's also in my book um, you know how to thrive as a raw vegan in winter and year round and so what what I would say is, you know, if you really feel like you need some 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 warm foods, then by all means, I totally suggest that you add some warm or cooked um, elements and ingredients to your uh, to your meals. My next topic is variety is the spice of life. So another way to add warmth to your raw vegan meals without adding heat is uh, through temperature is by adding warming spices that improve blood circulation to increase body heat. Now, let me repeat that, okay, because I think that this is um, a point that a lot of people overlook. And I will give you some examples of my personal journey. Another way to add warmth to your raw vegan meals without adding heat through temperature is by adding warming spices that improve blood circulation to increase body heat. So a lot of people have difficulty in winter and year round because they feel cold when they eat raw vegan food. And I've given some other tips in previous videos that you can um, go back and watch if you've missed those. Or maybe you want to watch them again. <laughs> That's super fine as well. So one of my favorite mottos in life, one of my philosophies in life that I really love is variety is the spice of life. And um, certainly by adding a variety of spices to our meals, we can make life more exciting and interesting. So some of the awesome warming spices that you might wish to include in your winter recipes are the following spices and I super love these spices. I don't know about you. Let me know in the comments what you think about spices here. Um, you can add allspice, black pepper, cardamom, cayenne, cinnamon, cloves, cumin, garlic, ginger, horseradish, nutmeg, and turmeric. These are very warming spices and very yummy, very enjoyable. This morning, I had cloves. So you meant, I mentioned cloves in this list. I had cloves in my matcha Japanese green tea. Now, the water was not heated. I use room temperature water out of the water filter. And I put cloves in the matcha tea, stirred it around, of course, mixed it all up. And it was so beautiful, so warming with room temperature water. And believe me, the, the water was a bit chilly, actually, because as I said, <laughs> I live in the northern part of the world and it's below freezing and I can feel it even inside that it's super cold. So if you so even by leaving, uh, you know, water in the filter on the counter, it's still quite chilly, but it's OK. You know, again, we can use these warming spices to help us to, um, you know, add some coziness and warmth and heat, if you will, um, energetically, some heat to our raw vegan journey. <clears throat> so in addition to warming your body through increased blood circulation, these beautiful warming spices also add dietary health benefits through their nutritional properties, including vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. And I truly believe that a lot of us overlook this. And I personally overlooked the nutritional benefits of herbs and spices, I would say for most of my life, honestly. Uh, growing up, yes, you know, we use herbs and spices, but I really thought it was just for flavor. I really didn't pay attention very much to the nutritional benefits and attributes of herbs and spices. And so it's been along my vegan journey, my life journey, my raw vegan journey that I have really conducted a deep dive into herbs and spices. And now, honestly, they are such a huge part of my lifestyle in so many ways. Um, 
And so, you know, adding these warming spices to various, um, L, you know, various parts of, of my diet lifestyle are super important. You can add them to your herbal teas, your, your green teas. You can add them to your smoothies, your juices, your salads, your dressings, your dips, your, your soups. Um, you know, even if you're keeping them raw or you're warming them to some extent, you can still benefit. You can add them to your cakes and cookies, breads and pizzas and burgers, all kinds of beautiful options out there. You know, this lifestyle is a lifestyle of abundance. And I truly believe that. The plant kingdom is so vast it's so abundant. It's so bountiful and beautiful. It's really not a lifestyle of scarcity. It's a truly, truly abundant and bountiful lifestyle. So if you're not tapped in, tuned in and turned on to herbs and spices yet, perhaps you might consider doing that whether you're raw vegan or not. Uh, so in the ebook, I include an article with more information on warming spices. Um, and uh, it goes into some warm spices for cold weather in particular, since a lot of people really are challenged, um, you know, in the winter time. <laughs> okay. Now, my next topic is food powders. So while it's certainly optimal to consume fresh, organic, seasonal, whole plant foods, there are times when you may not have access to fresh, seasonal options. You might be traveling. You might be at the office. You might be camping, uh, you know, wherever. <laughs> you might be at home. But you just do not have access to fresh, whole plant foods at the moment and or and or you want to supplement you want to complement your whole plant food options with some food powders so i personally include raw vegan organic dehydrated food powders in my diet either at home or while i'm traveling to add to my raw vegan organic soups, smoothies, sauces, dressings, etc. Dips, dips and hummuses and all of that. There are um, also great additions. Um, there are also great additions to dehydrated foods. So you can put them in cookies and cakes and breads and pizzas and burgers, etc. Um, to add a, a boost to, um, you know, your, to your meals, basically. So two of my favorite brands of vegan organic food powders are Amazing Grass and Sun Food, which you can typically find, um, you know, in your local supermarket or if you order online. That's another option, of course. Um, and you might find them helpful and inspirational for your um, winter meals at home, at work or while traveling. OK, and they have tons and tons of, of different food powders you can get. Um, you know, extra, um, you know, dehydrated, raw dehydrated uh, fruit powders, different fruits. Um, um, you know, I've had like acai, I've had blueberry, um, you know, all kinds of different fruits you can um, get in, in food powders. I really love the green powders as well. I'm currently um, you, uh, consuming a combination of green powders that would include like barley grass, wheat grass, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I put those in my smoothies. I put those in my dips um, as well. Um, you can make, you know, raw vegan soups with them. Everything, everything, everything. You can just put them in water, quite frankly, and consume them. And you will be getting a ton, a ton, a ton of nutrients, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, you're getting carbohydrates. You're getting the soluble fibers um, that dissolve in the water, uh, in the liquid. Uh, you're getting even the um, insoluble fibers uh, because it's still in a powder form. It's still extracted, so there's still some 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 fiber in there. Um, and you, you know, you're getting protein. You know, a lot of people are very, very, very. Shall I say again, very. <laughs> interested, shall I say, in consuming adequate 
protein. And I agree with that. However, you know, let's not dismiss the protein, the amino acids. That's really what we're after. The amino acids are the building blocks of the protein that we are so keen on talking about a lot. And you can get your protein in there, okay, in these food powders. So green powders, fruit powders, um, you know, whatever you prefer. There are other other, uh, brands as well. Um, I recently also consumed some um, uh, food powder uh, um, combination, a mix of green powders, super powerful, Um, a company called Garden of Life very powerful and they're raw. So what that means is they are heated only up to a certain temperature range. Typically, uh, the raw vegan temperature upper limit is 118 degrees Fahrenheit, more or less. Okay, some people will say it's 120 Fahrenheit. Some people will say, no, it should be lower. It should be maybe a little bit lower than 118. So I personally just kind of use the one of the official parameters for the raw vegan uh, raw temperature of about 118 degrees Fahrenheit. You know, my understanding is, of course, and this makes sense, honestly, but my understanding also is that some foods can tolerate higher temperatures and still retain their nutrients and their enzymes, uh, which are two of the key you know, factors, uh, elements and energies and essences that we really want to retain. That's why we are so interested in the raw vegan diet and lifestyle. And the next topic is um, to have an occasional cooked meal. And I think this is very important because... I really don't want people to feel that I am saying that everyone should be 100% raw vegan. I don't want anybody thinking that I am 100% raw vegan. I don't want anybody thinking that, you know, it's like, you know, all or nothing. You know, it's not an all or nothing journey if you don't want it to be an all or nothing journey. Yes, it's true that I go months and months and months and months 100% raw vegan. And then let's say I'm on a trip, I'm traveling and I'm curious about, you know, a certain cultural uh, cuisine where I'm where I'm visiting, then I will consume a cooked version of the local plant based vegan options. Um, If I'm out at a restaurant um, and, you know, there are no raw vegan options and there's some kind of cooked vegan option, I will eat that. Um, So it really just depends. You know, I I don't cook my food at home, cook, quote unquote, I prepare my food, but I don't cook it. Um, And actually, for several years now, my uh, stove has been covered to be used as counter space. Now, it's true, you know, that helps me a lot because I live in a small space. And so the kitchen space is small. So it really helps me to cover Um, the uh, surface of the stove and use it as counter space, right? So for my fruits and vegetables, you know, when I buy groceries, I can put them on the stove top as well. Um, So an occasional cooked meal, if you feel like you're struggling to remain completely on a raw vegan lifestyle in winter or any other time of year, you might wish to have an occasional meal that is cooked and then see how you feel, okay? If you're like me, you're not going to feel your best. You might experience some of the following, shall we say, side effects or mm, consequences. And they might be indigestion, inflammation, bloating, excess mucus, acne. And these Unpleasant side effects may act as deterrents to eating a lot of cooked food, even in winter. So you might want to keep it to a minimum, uh, particularly if you're experiencing some of these effects. So personally, for me, when I consume a cooked vegan meal, for me personally, my indigest, my digestion slows down. 
Um, I feel sluggish, tired, fatigued. Um, I do get, uh, you know, a little bit more bloating as well. And I also experience excess mucus in my eyes and my nose and my ears. So it really depends on, you know, what your circumstances are and your reasons, your, your, your mm, motivations for mixing some cooked meals in there occasionally. You know, it's a personal journey. And we all have our own path. And I'm just here to share some tips. That's really all I'm here to do, <laughs> you know, based on my own personal experience. And the last topic I'm going to cover for today is raw till four. Now, actually, the other day, someone commented that, you know, they typically eat, um, let's say, raw up until you know, let's say raw for their first two meals. So, you know, until like some somewhere in the afternoon, evening time, and then they have a cooked meal in the evening. And um, a lot of people call this uh, raw till four. Um, it's, it's a high raw vegan diet um, because basically anything between 50% and 74% roughly by weight of our consumption on average is considered high raw. And then any range, let's say 75% or above in weight of your diet is considered raw. So, you know, you decide how you want to define it. That's the definition that I found in the Becoming Raw book that I have referenced um, in an earlier video. Okay, Um, so if you're taking the raw till four approach, Um, this lifestyle involves eating raw vegan food until about four or whenever you're, you know, sometime in the afternoon or evening, and then having a cooked meal as your last meal, let's say it's in the evening or early or, you know, late afternoon or something like that. So some people feel drawn to a cooked meal in the evening to provide a sense of comfort and warmth and coziness and familiarity in winter or year round. So I invite you to have compassion for yourself. Trust yourself. And I talked about trust in an earlier video. So have compassion and trust yourself. And if you feel inclined, if you want to eat a cooked meal in the evening or any other time of the day, um, you know, either regularly or periodically, that's your choice. And I really encourage you and invite you to, you know, make that personal choice for yourself, regardless of what anyone is saying, or even or even regardless of what I'm saying. Because after all, this is your personal journey and this is your life. I also think that it's a journey and not a destination. And I know that's a famous, you know, quote, in some form or another, and I truly believe it. I don't believe that the raw vegan lifestyle is definitely a destination. Of course, if you if you think it's a destination, by all means, I encourage you to continue on that on that path. However, um, for some people, it can be a journey, and there are no rules. You are the architect of your own journey. Okay, and you and only you decide how you will experience your beautiful raw vegan journey. Okay, this is a really personal, personal decision. I know that there are a lot of, uh, shall we say, opinions about the raw vegan journey and... Some people think it's too extreme. Um, Some people think it's not optimal. You know, we all have our own opinions. I base my decisions on research, science, data, and observation of my own body, my own energy, my own essence, and my own 
experiences. And that's what I base it on. So that's what I'm going to cover today. I want to thank you so much for joining either live or on the replay. I want to invite you to tap the link in my bio um, and, um, you know, check out uh, the events that I have uh, coming up. And um, if you have any questions at all, by all means, please, um, you know, message me. And also, I encourage you, I invite you to follow me on Instagram and on YouTube. Join my community over on YouTube um, and uh, check out the wellness events I have coming up. Uh, this Saturday, meditation, a meditation session for all levels. Even if you're a total beginner, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's for everybody. And um, the following Saturday, I will be um, holding a travel well workshop so you can come on in and I'll learn about some awesome ways to maintain your wellness and well-being as you travel, either in your own country or internationally. So that's what I'm going to be uh, sharing. So uh, n in the next video, uh, I will cover some more topics. Uh, that come from my book, How to Thrive as a Raw Vegan in Winter and Year Round. And meanwhile, I'm going to wish you a beautiful rest of your day wherever you are in the world. Thanks so much and take good care, everybody. Bye-bye.